السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هدي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله وصفيه وأمينه على وحيه ومصطفاه من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه ورحمته وبركاته عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بهديهم ودعا بدعوتهم إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتهن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Verily all praises belong and are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Along with our any partner We laud him We ask of his aid And we beg for his assistance We seek refuge in Allah From the evils of our souls And from the consequences and vices of our misdeeds Those slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who receive guidance And true insight Knowledge And he opens up and expands their breasts That none can mislead them None can send them astray, none can disturb them and turn them away from this Sirat al Mustaqeen. And those poor slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those men and those women that are shown the truth, that come cross the path of the truth, but they reject it and refuse it and turn away from it. No one can ever lead them back to that which is correct and that which is will lead them to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet told us on that night, during that journey, 
when he saw that man and he saw people on his right hand side and whenever he looked towards his right he laughed and he smiled and he saw on the left hand side of that man more people and when he turned to the left hand or the left side he cried and he frowned and he asked who was that man that I saw and who were those people on his two sides they said that was Ibrahim alayhi salam that was your father Ibrahim the father of the prophets and on his right hand side were his progeny from the people of Jannah the believers, the righteous, the pious so he laughed and he smiled and when he turned on his left hand side he says those were his posterity those were his progeny from the people of the hellfire what is the Allah Ibrahim was happy when he saw the people that would be from the paradise and when he saw those from the hellfire it caused him grief and it saddened him those people whom Allah Azza wa Jal makes from the people of Jannah none can ever mislead them and send them to the fire and those who are misled waliyadu billah and they are caused to be from those of the blazing fire then none can ever rescue them or deliver them from that I will witness and I testify that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only deity worthy of worship along with any partner and I will witness and I testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his chosen slave and the last of his prophets and messengers O mankind for your Lord who made you from a single soul from which he made the partner and the pair of that soul from the two he created countless men and women and allowed them to live and dwell throughout the lands be mindful be conscious be watchful and be weary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one whose name you mention when you demand your basic mutual rights and stay far away from severing the ties of kin for Allah azza wa jalla is a watcher of that which you say and that which you do O you who believe Fear Allah perfectly, thoroughly, consistently, wherever you are, in any situation, any circumstance. Be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as one should. And do not die except as a Muslim. O you who believe, fear Allah, and speak the truth. Be directing your speech, be clearing your speech. Say that which is positive, that which is wholesome, and that which is correct. If you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you of your sins and repair your mistakes and your errors and turn them into good deeds and the one who obeys Allah and submits to the will of Allah and His Messenger is the most successful of Allah's slaves to so proceed the most excellent speech the best discourse is the Quran al Kareem, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best guidance is the way of Muhammad والسلام, and the worst things in Al-Islam it's to take the perfect guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and introduce novelties and hearsays and innovations because they are called bid'ah and every type of bid'ah is misguidance and all misguidance is in the fire of hell that evil place that we ask and we beg Allah Azza wa to protect us all from my dear brothers and sisters in al-islam Allah tells us many things in the Quran al kareem He explains to us many stories many incidences, many things that took place before us sometimes Allah tells us about the creation of the angels another time Allah speaks about the creation of the heavens and the earth Allah the mighty and the majestic tells us about the prophets and the messengers and the righteous and the wicked Allah told us about our father Adam السلام, and his wife Hawa السلام, and how they lived in happiness, in bliss, in joy, in peace and in safety they had no worries they had no troubles they had no means of stress Allah created them provided them with sustenance with things to eat and things to drink and a comfortable place to live but he told them to beware of someone he warned them to be wary to be watchful of an adversary a slave of minds a created being of minds that is not like you He's not made from what you're made of. He doesn't think how you think. Beware of this slave of minds. For he's an enemy to you. And he's an enemy to your offspring that will come after you. Beware Adam, Allah told him. Beware. Do not be fooled. Do not be deceived by this enemy. He will whisper. He will come. He will beautify things. Glorify things. Adorn things and it'll make them seem fair Allah Azza wa Jal told our father Adam and his wife Hawa وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ 
فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الْغَالِمِينَ He says, and do not go near this tree. Do not approach this tree. Lest you would be from the wrongdoers. You will be from the oppressors. You will be from the tyrants. Those who have wronged themselves. Those who have disobeyed my commands. And those who have not taken my advice. Look at what Allah told our forefather alayhi salam. وَلَا تَقْرَبَا He says, do not approach the tree. Do not come near the tree. And another place in the Quran, Allah told them not to eat from the tree. But in one place, he says, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا Do not come near the tree. Allah the Mighty and the Majestic, He tells us, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان Do not follow the footsteps of the devil. وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعُ خطوات الشيطان And those who follow the footsteps of the devil, فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرُ Then he will be led to acts of lewdness, indecent acts, reprehensible, repugnant acts. In other words, Allah did not say, do not follow the devil. Allah did not say, do not obey the devil. Allah said, follow not his footsteps. Don't come close to what the devil says, to what he whispers, to his plots and his plans, and what he glorifies and beautifies to you of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah told our forefather alayhi salam, if you go near this tree, then surely you will be from the wrongdoers. You will oppress yourself. And what had him, or what happened to our father Adam alayhi salam and his wife Hawa? What did Musa alayhi salam say to Adam when they spoke and they debated with each other? He said, you ate from this tree, you and your wife, and you caused misery and hardship upon all of us, your children. And Adam alayhi salam, he explained, or he gave an excuse and a reason of what happened and that he repented and it was decreed upon him. But what is important, every means of sadness, grief, and worry, and stress is in this worldly life. As for Jannah, there's no sadness. As for paradise, there's no jealousy. There's no envy. There's no difficulty. There is no class of people in which the those who are beneath this class or lower than that class have jealousy and have envy and feel a type of way. Rather, Jannah is a means of happiness for all. So what happened to Adam alayhi salam? The devil came to him and his wife and he didn't say disobey Allah. He didn't say that. He didn't say reject Allah's commandments. The Iblis, may Allah's curse be upon him, he did not tell our forefather that you'll be banished from paradise and that you'll go to the holy life and your children will suffer and kill each other and murder each other and steal and rob and rape and pillage. He did not say this. He promised Adam something. He sold him something. Adam alayhi salam forgot. He made a mistake. He slipped. And Allah Azza wa Jalla decreed for him to leave paradise because of that mistake. Allah tells in the Quran in Surah Taha that indeed we have given a covenant to Adam, but he forgot. And he was not firm and resolute upon what we told him to do. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, tells us in an authentic hadith that Adam alayhi salatu salam he forgot but nasiyat nuriyatuhu min ba'dihi and as a result of his forgetfulness his children his offspring they also forgot so we benefit from this brothers and sisters is that the son of Adam majloobun ala nisyan is naturally inclined and created to forget something happens something takes place in his life and then something else takes place and he forgets about it. He doesn't reflect. He doesn't ponder. How often does the son of Adam forget what he used to be upon? What he used to do? And how he was? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aiding us in combating this flaw and this defect that we have among human beings ourselves is to remind us. And from the greatest purposes and wisdoms of the Quran, Allah says, Dhikrun, Dhikra. The dhikr, tazkira. Allah mentions several words all having a similar meaning that the Quran is a reminder. The Quran is a means of reflection. The Quran is a means of waking you up and shaking you up and bringing you back into the realm of reality. Because you're a human being and you forget, not sometimes, not half of the times, but 
most of the times. And this is why the word insan is insan. Because he forgets. The best of creation, alayhi salatu salam, our beloved prophet and, prophet and messenger, what did he do when he prayed? He forgot. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you understand what this means? The one who was the closest to his Lord, the most knowledgeable of his Lord, the most fearing of his Lord, he forgot. Because Muhammad alayhi salatu salam was a human being. Innama ana basharun. Allah told him to say, I'm nothing but a human being. I'm not made from light. I'm not from the angels. I'm not immortal. I'm a human being with flesh and with blood, and I forget. So Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, he forgot in the prayer. So is forgetfulness a bad thing in Islam? Is it blameworthy? Is it something wrong with forgetting? The answer to this question lies in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. For waylun lil musalleen. Allah says, woe to those who pray. People who offer the salah, woe to them? No. The verse does not stop there. Allah tells us, those who pray lazily. Allah says, those who forget about their prayers. And Allah did not say those who forget in their prayers. Because Muhammad وسلم, forgot in the prayer. Muhammad was a human being. To forget about the prayer, but to forget in the prayer is like night and like day. So what do we want to mention in this khutbah? What are we warning ourselves from forgetting about in this khutbah, brothers and sisters? What is the bad type of forgetting? And what is the permissible or unprescribed okay type of forgetting? أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَارًا الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة الله وسلامه على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد From the things that the human being, that the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blamed for forgetting as what Allah tells us about in the Quran and Surah An-Nisa. But before we mention that verse, we must understand some of the bad characteristics of the son of Adam. Allah tells us that the son of Adam is created in a weak state. Allah the Mighty and the Majestic tells us that the son of Adam was created in haste. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us that the son of Adam has been made to be greedy, to be stingy, to have a lack of patience and a lack of forbearance. And this is why Allah Azzawajal says, Qad aflaha man Successful is the one who purifies himself, who cleanses himself, who wipes away some of the original characteristics of the son of Adam. And from the worst of those characteristics is to forget what you used to be upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe. He says, when you go out in a lost cause, and those who give you salams, do not ignore them. Do not reject them. Do not say, لَسْتَ مُؤْمِنًا تَبْتَغُونَ عَرَضَ الْحَيَةِ الدُّنَى Allah says, you're not, a, you're not a true believer. You're not a real believer. In other words, when you go out as Muslims, the Sahaba, fi sabili Allah Azza wa Jalla, and you come across someone, and they say, Assalamu alaikum. Don't say that you're a munafiq, you're a hypocrite. You're really not a believer. You're really not a Muslim. You only want our protection. You only come to the masjid for Ramadan. You only come because you want a service from the Muslims. Allah says, do not say this. Why not? Why shouldn't you say this? Why give the salams back? Why accept people as Muslims until proven otherwise? Allah says, كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا Allah says, this is how you used to be. But Allah blessed you. You used to be a non-believer. You used to worship fire. And this idol made from oatmeal, made from grain. I used to bury your daughters in the sand. I used to make fornication and prostitution and gambling and drinking. I used to murder your kinsfolk and your tribesmen for no reason except for jahiliyyah. But Allah blessed you. In other words, those of us who are born Muslim, when we practice the religion and we try to hold fast to the religion, not everyone, but many people, they have a, an extreme level of harshness, unnecessary harshness. 
a lack of wisdom. And often they push people away from the deen. But the question is, last year, were you not just doing that? Five years ago, were you not in that same state? Before you received that tape or that lecture or that, that khutbah or that class, before you traveled, you didn't dress like this. You didn't pray all of your prayers. You used to drink, you used to smoke in your country before you came to America. So why do you come to America and why do you treat your Muslim brothers and sisters who aren't as fortunate as you like how you used to be? Because you're the son of Adam and you forget. And this type of forgetting is blameworthy. And this is why Allah Azawajal says, Kadarika kuntum. Speaking to the Sahaba, you used to be like this. So take this into consideration, ya akhi. Take this into consideration, ya ukhti. Think about what the Prophet وسلم, said to his companions, the most knowledgeable, the most pious, those who wanted this land to spread the most. He says, Inna minkum He says, from among you people are those who scare people from Allah's religion. From among the Sahaba, he said, those who push people away from Allah's deen, Allah Akbar. What if the Prophet came and he saw us? How we push people away from Islam. How we run people away from the Sunnah. This is not the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He told his companions when he sent them to Al-Yemen, he said, Bashira wa la tunafira. Give glad tidings and don't scare the people away. Give glad tidings and do not scare the people away. Because if you were, if someone scared you away, if someone wasn't kind and gracious and merciful to you, where would you be at today? Allah says, from the virtue of Allah, the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lent to them. You were kind to them. You were lenient with them, O Muhammad. With who? With Abu Bakr Sadiq and Umar al Khattab radiallahu anhu, who was an enemy to Islam. He wanted to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallam, he made dua for Allah to support Islam through one of two men. Oh Allah, allow one of your two slaves to accept his deen, either Hamza or Umar. Because we'll bring strength and pride to the Muslims, protection to the Muslims, and they both accepted Islam. <clears throat> but before then, they were enemies to the deen. Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. How many campaigns did he kill on, the, on the, the battle of Uhud? And then Allah opened up his breast, and he accepted Islam. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْلًا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضْلُوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ Allah says, if you were hard-hearted, if you were harsh, if you were not wise, if you didn't remember the situation beforehand, they would have ran away from you, O Muhammad. None of the campaigns would have been there. If you practice this type of harshness, and this type of lack of wisdom, and this type of fake piety, fake piety, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to your brothers and your sisters, your wife and your children and your husband. And remember the state that you used to be in. And many of our brothers and sisters come from foreign countries, and they're immigrants in the United States. Most of them that I speak to, not all of them, but most of them didn't practice Islam in Pakistan or Bangladesh or Togo or Mali. Most of them didn't. And many of them when they came to America, they sat down, they learned some things, they read some books, they sat in some classes, they were removed from their environment and their culture and they learned some real true Islam, Sunnah. How many people came from Bosnia? And didn't practice this land, didn't pray, didn't cover. And they came to Connecticut and Allah guided them to the Sunnah. So when Allah guides you to the Sunnah, do not be harsh. Do not be overcritical. Do not be foolish and practice a lack of wisdom with your brothers and sisters from your country. What happened? Any other example that you wish to mention or wish to use as an analogy. So the point that we're going to get to in this khutbah Allah Azza wa Jalla is that we have to remember where we come from and what we used to be upon. You want your brother to come to Al-Islam. Your sister to come to Islam, your brother to come to the Sunnah, someone is doing something haram, then there's a way of advice. There's a way of speaking to them. There's a way of talking to them. Whether it's soft or whether it's harsh, but there is a way. And this is what Allah Azza intended from us. And what He said in His glorious book, Allah says, call to the way of your Lord, invite Magdawah. Call the people, invite them, warn them, tell them about Islam, tell them about the Sunnah. There's no doubt about this. But how? Bil hikmah. With hikmah. What does this word hikmah mean? The word hikmah comes from hakama. And what does the word hakama come from? Or what is it related to al ihkam? And what does that pertain? Or what does that pertain to? It's similar to another word in the Arabic language, al aql, intellect, brains. 
And the term aql is similar to another word in the Arabic language, the iqal. The reins of the camel or the horse. And when you pull the camel back, stare to the right, stare to the left. Don't go, don't move. This is what your aql is to tell you to do. You have brains, think. Don't walk forward. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. And it's a similar meaning to hikmah. You have to walk, but maybe not in this direction. You have to walk, but maybe at, not at this speed. Hikmah, wisdom and da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it's being soft or whether it's being harsh. Whether it's speaking or refraining from speech. Whether leading by example or teaching. Al-Muhim is that we have to be mindful of what Allah Azza has blessed us with. And if we think that we have received Allah's guidance, <coughs> And everyone else is misguided. And I don't have to be merciful and kind to my Muslim brothers or the kuffar and calling them to Islam. Then know for sure this blessing could be stripped from us and it can be taken away from us. As the Prophet has informed us, he says, if you didn't make sins, Allah Azza wa Jalla would bring in people who made sins, who sought his forgiveness, and he would forgive them because Allah Azza wa Jalla loves to forgive. Allah loves to pardon, and Allah loves for His slaves to call out to Him. So we ask Allah Almighty and the Majestic to make us of those who realize the blessing of our Islam. Ameen. Ameen. We beg Allah Azza wa Jalla to forgive us of all of our sins and mistakes and shortcomings. Ameen. Ameen. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to have mercy upon our poor souls. Ya Rabbul Alameen. We beg that Allah Azza wa Jalla forgive all of the believers, men and women sitting in this masjid there today. Ameen. Ameen. We ask that Allah Azza wa Jalla will make it easy of those Muslims who have debt. Ameen. Ameen. We ask Allah Rabbul Alameen to cure all of the sick and ill Muslims wherever they may be, Ya Rabbul Alameen. We beg that Allah Azza wa Jal bring support and relief to our brothers being murdered and persecuted wherever they are, Ya Rabbul Alameen. We ask that Allah put an end to their suffering <coughs> and to their pains and to their agonies, Ya Rabbul Alameen. We ask that Allah Azza wa Jal will make us firm upon Islam until the day in which we die, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi Rabbul Alameen. وسبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين. الله أكبر الله.